This is Katie O'Hagan, voice of Mia Winters, and welcome to the Vogue Podcast. Hello, guys, and welcome to episode 10 of the Vogue Podcast, season two. And I'd like to add that with this, we are starting off the Resident Evil Saga interviews. First, I'm going to have on Katie O'Hagan. Is it? Should be. Katie O. O'Hagan. O'Hagan, yes. And she (laughs) is Mia Winters in Resident Evil 7 and the Village. So, Katie, tell me. How are you doing today? Very good. Very good. <laughs> it's been a whirlwind since Village came out. <laughs> I can believe that. <laughs> so, um, you know, you were in Seven, uh, mm-hmm. like in 2017. So how was it to, you know, return to the role of Mia in Village? It was very exciting. I, I really had no idea. I was always hopeful because she didn't die at the end of Seven. So mm-hmm. I had hope, but you never know what video games and where they're going to twist and turn and go to. So when I got the phone call, it was very, very exciting. <laughs> I believe you that. When did you actually, you know, uh, get to know about Village and that it's all happening? Um, I mean, I, I got to know when I got the phone call in early 2019. So oh, I basically cool. got a phone call saying that, you know, they were bringing me back and they wanted to know if I'd be interested in reprising my role. Oh. Of course, I said yes. <laughs> <laughs> and it just kind of went from there. Yeah, I, I really had. They told me right off the bat they weren't sure how big of a role or small, but they definitely <laughs> knew she was coming back. And I was right away. I said yes. <laughs> Did you actually had to audition again or? No, luckily, (laughs) which is very nice, very um, easiest audition I ever had uh, was not auditioning. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, that that must have been fun. Yeah, I think uh, they realized I went through enough with the the first audition. So (laughs) (laughs) they were okay with me coming back for the second. (laughs) Yeah. Did you uh, actually, you know, uh, did mocap for Resident Evil 7 too or only Village? Yeah, I did uh, mocap, voice, and facial capture for both games. Ah, I see. I see. Got to be nice and active, which Mm. I appreciate. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, but you not only do voice acting, but also acting in general, right? Yes, yeah. Can you you tell me about your projects, perhaps? Anything Um, you're working on, perhaps, now that you can talk about? uh, Right now, uh, things... Uh, Hollywood land basically is slowly coming back to life um, since COVID. So mm-hmm. things are um, opening back up, starting to audition again, which is really nice. I've, I've missed it terribly. Uh, I'm looking forward to in-person auditions again because uh, we've been lacking those for the past year and a half. <laughs> yeah, yeah, kind of. Yeah, a yeah, little bit, a little bit. Um, <laughs> I heard in-person ones are slowly coming back. It's still a lot of virtual, Mm -hmm. but um, slowly but surely. So it's been nice um, with that coming back up. With that being said, no uh, projects currently in the works, just auditions and stuff, Mm -hmm. which is great. And then, you know, past stuff. (laughs) I filmed my time, did a couple of short films. I've been in a couple Mm -hmm. of commercials, um, you know, uh, looking (laughs) into more mocap. So slowly but surely more more will come out. I hope so. Was Resident Evil 7 your first mocap? It was, yeah. It was actually my first foray into everything. Motion capture, voiceover, (laughs) um, video games, the whole world. So it it was, uh, I definitely was thrown in and it was kind of like sink or swim. So I just went for it and I'm very grateful that it was not a sink for me. Mm -hmm. (laughs) (laughs) I managed to keep my head above water. yeah, and it just uh, it it's created this whole new uh, world in life, which is so cool. Because um, for me, I started in theater, uh, mm-hmm. so motion capture and video games kind of brings in both theater and yes. film, which is exactly. really cool. It's this like weird middle ground. So for me, for somebody who who was in theater for basically my whole life. Um, <laughs> This was like the coolest thing I found. And I realized, how did I not know about this sooner? Like, I want to be in this world. I want to do more of this. Like, this is what I want. (laughs) 
Yeah, but I wouldn't really even like uh, call a mocap like voiceover, you know, because voiceover used to be about, you know, sitting behind a microphone and reading your lines. It yeah. changed since, since uh, you know, the mocap the technolo- technology and all that. And that's really fascinating. And, and it's cool too, because um, I've, you know, I've done some voiceover where it is just mm-hmm. that I'm in a booth and I'm, mm-hmm. you know, becoming the character and just doing the lines. Yes. And I definitely give props to, to actors who do a lot of that. And that's like a big part of their career because it's difficult. It's really difficult yeah. to bring up all that emotion, to bring up like that angst and that energy when you're by yourself in a exactly. little booth. And that's all you have. So um, I think for me, with this being like my first start into it, I mm-hmm. got very lucky because I did have that motion capture. So I was able to, you know, fully act out scenes with other actors and have the voice. So then when yeah. I did go into the booth, I had a base of where I was at when I shot the scenes, what I'm going to reach and how mm-hmm. I reached it. So for me, it definitely made that transition easier and then going forward now going into a booth for if it is just the voiceover part Mm. I have a better understanding of like what needs to go into it and how much more I need to do so it's been cool it's been a learning experience um (laughs) I think that's the biggest thing is having people understand you know us actors like every job's a learning experience. So for me, this was quite a large learning experience, but it was also one of the coolest ones I've ever had. So yeah, yeah. I was watching the behind the scenes uh, uh, video in village. And now that I think about it, it it must be much easier, you know, when you're uh, in the studio with the other actors to act Mm -hmm. out all those scenes, rather than in just a booth by yourself. For me, it was. (laughs) I know some people are really good at getting that energy in the booth by themselves. But for me, it definitely helped to have that base to start with the motion capture, doing all the scenes. And then, cause I did have to do, especially that scene. Cause you know, getting shot up and there's yeah. noise and there's crashing. And yeah. so that scene in general, a lot um, of ADR had to happen. So like I had to go into the booth and like recreate the lines and the energy levels and things like that. So with that scene in particular, like I did have to definitely recreate it in the booth, but I was able to have that base. Like I remember and I knew everything that was there on set. So ah. it was, yeah, it was nice. Yeah. So basically you guys do your mocap uh, scenes and then you have to go into like a booth to record the lines again. No, it's more, we do the motion capture while doing the lines. I mean, we are fully, um, besides being in the motion capture suit with all the reflectors on it, you also are fully mic'd. Um, you know, you have the facial cameras on you. So they're recording everything. So if the the um, audio works, that they use that. Um, I want to say they probably use most of the audio that's done on set. But sometimes things happen. Um, uh, audio doesn't pick up right. You hear an airplane in the background on accident. Like there's so many different things that can happen on set. Yeah. And so you come back later and go specifically um, to a sound studio and do ADR. And sometimes it's just like one line or sometimes they're like, oh, you know what? To link the scene, we want to add a line. So you'll add mm. in lines. And then also a lot of your... Um, that extra ADR work is uh, um, physical sounds. So you do a lot of um, Mm -hmm. the efforts. So you go into a booth to do just Mm -hmm. making noises, jumping or climbing a rope or punching or dying. So (laughs) yeah, I'm sure Todd Solly had a- Yeah, yeah. Uh, I I think (laughs) he had a lot more in the second game than the first. I must agree with you. I think a lot of uh, pain. I- I'm pretty sure. From what I understand, there was a lot of pain efforts mm-hmm. that he uh, had to do. He lost yeah. fingers and hands quite yeah. often. So, <laughs> Yeah. 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 Indeed. <laughs> so, <laughs> so what did you know about the Resident Evil world before you actually stepped into it? Um, I knew bits and pieces. So I was in grade school when... Resident Evil first came out. And I definitely remember the first game. Um, I, you know, I had friends who played it. Like I definitely saw it being Mm -hmm. played. I never really played it, but I kind of knew the general idea of it. Um, Mm -hmm. I watched, you know, I had seen throughout the years, like a couple of the movies and I definitely knew the movies like 
took on their own twist. They didn't quite stick with what the video games were. They used like similar characters, but they yeah. didn't really stick with that story. Yeah. So I understood like there was always this weird <laughs> juxt, you know, people who are like, no, no to the movies, yes to the games. So <laughs> yeah, I had that yeah. much knowledge. <laughs> I also knew, um, you know, you hear Resident Evil, like I always knew how big it mm-hmm. was. I knew it was very popular. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and I knew the basis of what the stories tend to be, but I mm-hmm. have never really been a gamer because I've been terrible. Like I'm terrible at playing games. <laughs> I'm great. I love bringing your characters to life for you. I am awful at trying to get through a game. <laughs> I wish I was better because it's so impressive, but I have an Irish temperament, which means I get very frustrated very easily. (laughs) So I tend not to get very far. I tend to yell at the screen a lot. And there's something about, Uh you know, I started to play seven and I'm literally like yelling at myself. Mm -hmm. So it's a little awkward, (laughs) a little weird. Um, it was funny. definitely funny. I mean, everybody around was laughing at it. Uh, I was just getting frustrated. <laughs> <laughs> Did you play it on the VR headset? I started or? to. I uh, so I started playing seven when it first came out at regular. Um, didn't get very far because mm-hmm. I again just trying to get used to the remote uh, alone. I grew up on Nintendo and Atari. Mm-hmm. I'm aging myself, but that's what I grew up on. So um, PlayStation, like the amount that goes into games now, there's so many buttons and all these things. So I attempted it without. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, okay, a friend of mine got VR and they brought it over. And I was like, all right, I'm going to try it. It is so hard. It was so cool, but so difficult. I mean, I had to use the remote, but you can't see the remote. Mm -hmm. So you just have to know where the buttons are. So I give props to everyone out there who does this. Because it took me two hours yeah. just to get to the point where basically I scare myself. Like Mia comes crawling up the stairs. It took yeah. me two hours to get to that point. I think it takes yeah. most people like 10 minutes to get to that point. It took me two hours. Yeah. I mean, I guess that was fun. It was so much fun. I'm going to so do good. it again. I'm going to keep trying until I get better. You do that with Willis, Yes, please. I definitely want to do that with Willis. <laughs> Yeah, you should. That will definitely be happening in the next couple of months, for sure. For sure. <laughs> yeah, that would be funny. So what exactly, like, uh, what, is, what are your personal thoughts about Mia as a character? I, I love her. Like, I, of course, I have a soft spot for her. Um, I think, I know I've said this before, I think she's grown so much. Um, you know, maybe I'm just looking too in depth at it because it was a part of me. But from the first game to this game, I just think um, she's grown as a woman. She's grown as a person and she's grown in her relationship. I feel like in seven, she was very selfish. Um, It was just, you know, she was like career oriented, very selfish, like no one can get hurt. I'm going to do what I want to do. And then throughout the game, she realizes the wrong that's happened and it spirals. And by the end of seven, you know, she sacrifices or attempts to sacrifice herself to save Ethan, but ultimately mm-hmm. he saves her. And then in eight, yeah. you know, she comes in and it's much more, um, I feel like you get a different Mia, which is what I really appreciated with this game when I got the bits of the script with her in it. And I got to see <laughs> how different she was. Um, she actually, she really cared about this family. She just like, this was her happiness. That's all she wants is this. And, you know, like usual in the Resident Evil universe, it all gets destroyed. I mean, so. yeah. I mean, we haven't, we haven't seen much of her in Resident Evil 8. I mean, you know, on the beginning, the scene that was actually Mother Miranda, if I got it right. And, you know, at the ending, we got a little of uh, yeah. Mia. She's so we, like you know. sprinkled <laughs> in the game. Um, so, you, yeah. But even with the little bits, um, I definitely appreciated a that she wasn't killed off in that first scene. Yeah, I thought she was <laughs> when I first got the script. I thought, all right. I mean, I thought too. <laughs> I think everybody thought that. I, I got lots of everybody yeah. I got lots that. of people hitting me up online, being like, "I'm so sad. I can't believe she did. They did that to Mia." So I appreciated all the love that people were bummed that 
they thought that happened. But luckily, if you've played through the game, spoilers, more happens. So you got to play all the way through. Yeah. Play through the game and then reach out. Exactly. To exactly. Okay. My own mom, I sent like a, like somebody had created online clips of the scenes Mia's in. And I was like, oh, this is so cool. I can show my family because they're not gamers, you know, for them to be able to see this mm -hmm. stuff, I kind of have to like piece it together for them and give it to them. <laughs> So yeah, I yeah. sent, I sent yeah. my family like this clip that someone created, which whoever did it, thank you. It was awesome. Um, so I sent it and then I talked to my parents afterward and my mom was like, oh yeah, I was so bummed. You know, they killed you off. And I was like, did you watch the whole video? She's like, well, I watched the first part that, you know, you get shot and die. And I was like, mom, watch the whole video. <laughs> Typical parents, they do this all the time. I'm like, I'll just get a snippet. And they wonder why as kids, when we had to do book reports, it's like, I'll read the front of the book, the back of the book, maybe somewhere in the middle, and then I'll get the idea of it. Yeah, exactly. That's what parents do now. So. Yeah, that's lame. <laughs> but she did go back and she did watch the whole thing. And she's like, oh, I'm so happy. I'm like, so am I. <laughs> <laughs> Is she an actress too? No, no, she's a nurse. Okay, then she then she wasn't then she probably wasn't pretending. She was not you know? pretending. <laughs> That's how I know my parents. I'm the only actor in the family. Um, everybody else has got those big grown up jobs. So my mom is a nurse. Um, yeah, so she she uh, it's it's a different world when I when I send them stuff or when I tell them I'm involved in things or I'm you know on TV or something. It's it's very exciting because it's a very different world for them, which is cool. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Is. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to get back to Mia, but did you actually plan to like use a different voice for her, or you, did you had like the idea at the beginning, or how was it? I think it just came from the audition um, when I first auditioned. So when I first heard or or saw the casting call for um, Mia, it was they were just looking. It it said it was for a video game. It said they were looking for a woman, you know, within like my height range and my physical features, but uh, they were looking for someone who was like possessed. So they wanted this like crazy zombie-esque, like possessed mm -hmm. person. And that's something I really enjoy doing. I've been cast ah. a lot as zombies <laughs> or crazy. <Yeah>. So. <laughs> <laughs> I do the I do the noise as well apparently um yeah yeah do. so oh. the first audition I went in and it was um you know it was very it was on a motion capture stage I did it with mm -hmm. the director it wasn't like other actors it was just me and the director and um it was kind of a lot of improv um giving me like ideas they wanted to see how i would scare people um what noises i would make if i was in certain situations what would i do so that was really cool and it was also very very physical which i'd never been in an audition that was like that physical because again i've never done mocap before at that yeah, point so it was a new thing to you so it was yeah. very new i came home very very sore i was not expecting that um <laughs> i had to like remind myself to get back to the gym and get into shape if i got this role <laughs> <laughs> and then they called me back because they were like oh well this character will also be normal and we might get a different actress so i actually had to audition to be normal mia also Mm -hmm. So I went in, I auditioned for the normal version, and then mm -hmm. I got a call saying, you know, they wanted to offer me the role like for both of them. So basically as like all of Mia, which was damn, amazing. Damn, I would have been mad if they got a different actress for normal Mia. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I mean, how, I mean, how does that work? That doesn't work. I don't know. Like. I don't know. I really don't. I mean, I get like some people are are better at doing the crazy. So that's just what they want them for. And some people, so who knows? Um, but I was very grateful that they saw that I could be normal also. Um, that well, was very helpful. <laughs> there is no Mia without you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I feel that way now. <laughs> yeah. Do you actually have a favorite Mia line perhaps? I know there's not a lot, but from i mean there's lots in seven um but well, let's in, let's in, say a few like one from seven and one from village one or two okay let's see um <laughs> from seven uh i think probably 
of course, like all my favorite lines have swearing in them, which yeah. I feel bad because of course, like I have all these younger nieces and nephews that I can never show this stuff until they become teenagers. <laughs> uh, yeah. But uh, yeah, so probably from, um, probably from seven, it would be when she pops up and she's like, I know you didn't mean to hurt me, but you shouldn't have done that. It fucking hurt. That is definitely a favorite. That is a definitely good line. Yeah. That's that's really, really fun because it goes from normal to crazy, yeah. which I think is probably the most terrifying thing ever. Because when she yeah. pops out of that door, she's so calming of like, it's okay. Yeah. It's okay, Ethan. You're scared, like, you're, you're scared the crap out of me. Yeah. <laughs> I scared the crap out of me when I played it in VR. <laughs> you're scared the crap out of everyone. I know. <laughs> which that was my job. So I did it. I'm so yeah. happy. <laughs> yeah so that um that's probably my favorite from seven um and then from eight oh there's quite a few I know I know like we said like I'm not in it like a ton but there actually are so many lines from eight that I love and I think it's because I got to be more emotional in it mm-hmm. um I really love when in the flashback Mia is talking to Ethan and you know she's getting very upset and he's just not getting it. And she finally just snaps and she's like, you matter, Ethan, we matter. Like, it's just, it's so real (laughs) and so guttural. And I feel like everyone has been in a situation like that where they're just trying to get through to someone they love. And they're just like, you know, we all matter. You matter. Like, it's almost like reassuring him. Like, don't you get it? Like you're important. And I love, love, love that scene. Um, and then I also love, um, this scene with Chris when he first finds Mia, Mm -hmm. um, when he basically finds her and then is just going to like leave her there, which (laughs) who does that? Chris, I'm still still mad at Chris for this. He is the only person who can do that. Seriously, he's like, "Oh, wow, I found her. That's amazing." Okay, I'm gonna head out now. So I'll, yeah. you'll you know, be safe cool. here. If you die, then it was an accident. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sorry. You'll be safe here. Obviously, she won't be uh, safe there. Like, so I really love when he like tries to walk away and she stops him, and she's just like you know, where is my husband? Where is my daughter? It's, it's so real. Like you get yeah, exactly. that feeling of yeah. family from Mia. Like you you finally get that taste. Cause there's a lot of like Mia hate, like she's yeah. the cause of everything. <laughs> and I love that. There's just that little moment of she really cares Like if, if she could be the one out there looking for everyone and fighting for them and finding them, she would, you know, and, and you get, you finally get that taste of it, um, in that moment. And then same with the end, um, the very end of the game where you just, there's just so much emotion and it's just like, you know, Chris, what have you done? It's just like this sinking feeling. Um, so I just, I, I know it's few and far between, but I just, the scenes, that they wrote for Mia, the scenes they created for Mia, I thought were beautiful. And I really yeah. thought, you know, gave just those little bit of rea- like reality in a way to the yeah. game, yeah. in my opinion. <laughs> I don't know exactly. what people think, but yeah, it definitely was really amazing. Your performance and pretty much everyone's performance. Yeah. R- really amazing. It, you know, it, I-, I like this one particular line, Churba de la Goom. Oh, God. <laughs> Yeah, I tried to remain as serious as I could. But yeah, that was a really good line. Oh, uh, that line was so difficult. <laughs> I require you to say that. <laughs> because I know I destroy it every time. I've had fans like DM me them recording themselves saying it because I know I say it wrong. It's like, Chiorba de Legum. Not too bad. I mean, I'm not Romanian, so I, I, I you know what? If, if we have any Romanian watchers, please correct her if something. Okay. Well, I think it's French. <laughs> I I believe it's a French cuisine. I think somebody told me it's French. 
wrong. I don't know who was that. I don't know if he was wrong or not. Because, you know, I was watching some reactions to Resident Evil Village, of course. And there's this one particular Romanian guy. And he said, that's Romanian. Oh. So I, I don't know if that's Romanian or not, I guess. Well, because it's they're they're in Louisiana and they say it's a local cuisine. So I thought it was like a French like type of thing. I could be very <laughs> off. But all I know is I had to say it so many times and they all giggled at me because I said it wrong. Like the first time it ever came out of my mouth, I butchered it apparently. <laughs> so we had to do it quite a few times. And they kept being like, no, 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 like it should go up here and do this. So it was like, oh God, what did they say? It was something like, Chove de legume. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah, like, like, what, I, is this what you expect me to say? I know. I was just like, um, okay. I'm <laughs> Irish American. Like, I, I wish, like, can somebody just say it in my ear a thousand times and then I'll repeat it? That, yeah. that would be helpful. That so, would be I'm sorry for butchering it. I tried. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I mean, I guess it was uh, good enough. I try. I try. Yeah, it, yeah. It's it's the thought that counts, right? <laughs> it's it's appreciated. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> so what was the rest of the cast like? Perhaps start Sally. I I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing his name right. And Carol Stanzione, uh, mm-hmm. the hag. So, can you tell yeah. me a bit about the experience of working with them? Yeah. So it was actually kind of crazy. Um, because a good chunk of this game um, kind of got put on hold and then we had to record a bit during COVID, uh, it was a different experience because I didn't get to work with a lot of the actors, which kind of bummed me out. Because in Seven, Mm -hmm. even if I didn't have scenes with other actors, I still was on set with them. I got to meet them. I got to see them doing their scenes before I came Mm -hmm. in and did mine. Um, So I really got to know the cast of seven a bit more than eight, which bums me out because eight Mm -hmm. had such an epic cast. Yeah. Um, The amount of voice actors, motion capture actors that were brought in who like are just known for their motion capture. It was just such an amazing group. So I did get to meet um, some of them and bits and pieces, but a good chunk of them I'm meeting now, like after the fact. So there's a lot of actors that I met officially like through doing online things. Um, there's a big Resident Evil reunion coming up this Saturday, the 6th. So I'm actually going to meet a lot of these actors officially for the first time. So Ooh. I'm very, very, very excited about that. Um, <laughs> but Todd, of course, um, you know, I got to work with him all through seven. And then again, um, most of my scenes are with him or with Chris, mm-hmm. who was played by Jeff. Yeah. Um, so those are the two main ones who I got to work with. And both actors are just fantastic. Um, there was such a um, feeling of family and friendship with everyone. And I think mm-hmm. that's kind of what makes Resident Evil great is they bring in actors. It seems like they, they find people who have this sense of like being excited to be a part of something wanting to make friendships and connections on top of just the work which is so cool and I think you can see that in a lot of stuff (laughs) after the fact like we love doing you know dual signings with people we love um linking up things and meeting outside of you know work and the entertainment world to actually just hang out um so it's been really cool in that aspect um (laughs) getting to meet these people uh, and be a part of all of this and make a lot of new friends I mean it's rare that you work on a project and continue a friendship afterwards because people are just constantly working and moving and on to the next so to be able to have an experience like this where you know, six years later, I'm still hanging out with and talking to and friends with a lot of the actors from seven. And now I'm meeting all these new ones from village. And, uh, it's, it's been amazing. I mean, it's what you hope for when you do this. Um, so it's, it's been really, really cool, but yeah, I, I love, I just love everybody brings such different talent. Um, yeah. To it. So it's really cool. You learn a lot from people, but you also, you know, you almost have to catch yourself sometimes from being in awe. Like when you're acting with somebody, like you have to stop yourself from just staring at them. Like that was really good. Like, yeah. That was believable. And you're like, wait, 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 I'm in the scene too. Like, 
yeah I, oh yeah yeah that, that completely sl- slips out of the mind like uh, oh it's me coming now okay sorry it's like oh my turn my bad my turn yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah so uh um I'm I'm not entirely sure if this is confirmed or not, but I have heard that the actors in Village and Seven were non-union uh, ca- uh, actors. Is that? Uh, I don't know. I don't know how. Yeah, I don't know that side of everything. <laughs> are you like in a union or something? I am now. Yeah. Ah. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. you can um, you can get into the union. There's a, there's also different parts of the unions. Um, so you can be straight out in unions, but you can also do FICOR. You can also, um, be eligible to be in unions, but you're not quite in them yet. So there's, there's Mm -hmm. lots of different aspects. There's also different unions. So some of the actors are from the UK. So I don't know, you know, what, how it works over there or their status. So it's all very different. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And what benefits perhaps you get if now that you're in the union and perhaps something you didn't had when you were non-union, what are the benefits? I, you know, I think it's just when it comes to unions, like, um, I think there's just like protections, um, just making sure you're not overworked or underpaid or, um, I, I know a couple of years ago, uh, the, the unions were, you know, working for voice actors to help them, Mm -hmm. um, be protected because Mm -hmm. there wasn't, um, there wasn't a, a lot in place, so voice actors could really strain their voice because yeah. they were being pushed too far. Yeah. So now there's just like rules and things in place which are helpful. So yeah, if you're doing a character that is, you know, like vocally straining, you're not going to be in a booth for eight hours screaming at the top of your lungs because that's not allowed because yeah. you destroy your voice. And yeah, that's not going to help anybody. Yeah, <laughs> so, exactly. That, that reminds yeah. me of a previous interview I had uh, an actor, a voice actor. So he was recording for a character back in 2007 ish. Okay. And now uh, he was recording like for four hour, four hours straight. And mm-hmm. at one moment, he was like, he, he he has to like you know sit down and rest because he couldn't yeah. keep up and and the director was like what's going on i mean like man yeah. I, I have so to everybody, sit down yeah it's like everybody has different experiences um yeah. you know my experience especially with capcom and the mm-hmm. workhouse and doing resident evil um it was great because they know this they know like everything strenuous they're giving us these characters that are crazy and screaming and all this stuff. So, um, whatever the status is, like they were always great with us. If we needed a break, if we, like, I actually, I actually, um, hurt my ankle really bad last year and I was on crutches for like a month and I ended up having to go in to do some ADR work during it. And I let him know ahead of time. I was like, you know, I, I twisted my ankle. I must, you know, tore some ligaments. Mm-hmm. I'm on crutches. And so like when I got there, besides all the COVID safety stuff they had set for us, they also like made sure like they had a chair for me and somebody was like getting things for me. So I didn't have to be like lugging uh-huh. around in my crutches while trying to do <laughs> any of the audio. So, and, and, you know, having breaks and meals. So, I mean, it's all yeah. again, everybody's experience is going to be different with yeah. every different project you hope like I can only hope that mine are all as good as they were with these games because I definitely feel like I got spoiled because it was such a fantastic experience both games um yeah. between how they treated us and how we went through things and um the fact that you know they come back to you after years later to be like hey yeah. we want you to come back it's it's amazing like, it's just amazing. It is. Capcom really seems caring for the actors. But some companies are like, we don't want the actors to be too famous, so we're not going to let them on these conventions. So, yeah. I don't know anything about that. I hope they wouldn't do that because I'm excited for the world to open back up. Well, I want to go to Cap- conventions. I want to Cap- meet people. <laughs> Capcom doesn't seem to be, you know, doing that. So I, that's pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, they seem just as excited about this resurgence of Resident Evil and the horror base as we are. I mean, they're thrilled that it's coming back. I mean, you see 
how well Village is doing, the numbers, yeah. people who are getting it, people who are so excited to play it. I mean, I get people being like, I'm on my 13th run. And I'm just like, <laughs> how? <laughs> yeah, it's a... Uh... It's, it's really, amazing. It's amazing. Yeah. yeah. People people still seem to like play it through even after, you know, because it's exciting, the story and all that. The the voice and there's work, different, everything. I mean, there's different ways to do things. Like you never yeah. know. Like go yeah. this way, something else could happen. Go that way. Like th- there's twists like, and turns everywhere. <laughs> like like uh, Chris faced uh, Lady Dimitrescu. Yeah, the mods, of course, or the, yeah, all that fun stuff. Those <laughs> seem hysterical. I've been seeing some of those online and I just, <laughs> I was like, who thinks of this? <laughs> yeah, that was uh, pretty uh, silly. <laughs> mm-hmm. I've seen, I've seen some interesting ones. That is for sure. <laughs> Tell us about it. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't played them. I've just seen them. <laughs> ah, you've seen it. Nasty. Sounds nasty. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, do you have like a personal favorite character from Village? That's not Mia. Ooh, um, yeah. I mean, I love Lady D. Like, she's amazing. Uh, yeah. Um, anytime you get to have a character, so I'm a big um, Disney fan. I've always loved Disney villains. I actually worked for Disney in my youth. Uh, so <laughs> when I first saw that character, it reminded me of the evil queen so much. And she uh, is probably one of my favorite characters. Mm. Um, so there's definitely part of me that's like, oh, it's that, that's definitely a favorite for sure. Um, <laughs> the Duke is pretty awesome. I mean, every, like, there's a lot of great characters in it. The werewolves. Yeah. I actually kind of love the werewolves, and I know oh. Neil got to do um, some motion capture acting, like as the werewolves. And yeah, I think I've seen that video. Yeah, yeah. I'm kind of jealous. Like, I would have loved for them to be like, <laughs> "We want a female werewolf," and I'd be the first one to be like, "Let me do it." <laughs> like, please, please, I'll go crazy. Let me give me the chance. Put me in, coach. So. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, no female werewolves. I know. <laughs> did next you actually time. next time? Yeah. Did, <laughs> did you actually audition for any of the other characters, like Lady D, or for example, you know? Um, they did let us audition. Um, I I don't know like how many people they put it out to, but they did um let me audition for a few of the other characters, um. Obviously, I didn't get them, but it kind of makes sense because I think for Capcom, their biggest worry was um, there'd be too much confusion of yeah. like, wait, that sounds like Mia. Even if I put on a different voice, yeah. when you're literally in the game um, as such a well known character because of Seven, uh, I mm. think there was like, you know, there was that bit. And then ultimately, when the game came out and you see, the people who got these roles, you're like, yeah, that makes sense. Like, that's much better than what I did. Like, <laughs> the audition tape I sent it, like, that person's much better. I'm glad they got it. <laughs> Can you actually, like, you know, uh, remember what did you audition for? What characters? Um, I actually got to audition for Rose, which was really cool. Oh, yeah. Wow. That was really, really cool. Um, you know, it was just kind of like a it was definitely put out there as like we want you to come in it's a big maybe like (laughs) because you'd literally be playing your daughter um but it was cool because I did get to go in I did get to act very young I got to put on a much younger voice which was cool so it was neat to do but I completely understood because um when adult or teenage rose gets mad and like yells at a person you know (laughs) like they flat out said they're like that sounds like Mia like when (laughs) even at a even in a younger voice when I build up to like anger it's still you know there's still that it was crazy my voice and it's like (laughs) the last thing you want for like the gamers is for them to be playing it and being like wait that sounded like Mia like isn't this supposed to be your daughter so it was a cool concept, but yeah. I really like after seeing and hearing, you know, how it all turned out. Like I love 
ever. Like I love how it all came together. I appreciated having the chance to audition because it was fun to be able to do something different. Um, but I totally understood when they were like, yeah, it's, it's a little too close. And I was like, I agree. Yeah, <laughs> I definitely agree. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Could you like, perhaps, you know, like show off the voice you used for Rose, perhaps oh, get into her character a little bit? I w- <laughs> it was so long ago. <laughs> I mean, I, I can really uh, recall her lines. Either. I know. I, I don't because, you know, she she's kind of the the button at the end. So, again, if yeah. people are watching this and haven't played the whole game, sorry. Spoiler. Yeah. Yeah, guys. Uh, if, if you are, you know. Hopefully. Hopefully, <laughs> anyway. if you're watching this, it's because you've played the game. Um, I, I think. Yeah. I, I think it was just. I feel like without actually knowing the lines, this is going to sound so silly. Um. Hi, Dad. Happy birthday. Like it was just softer. It was just mm. like sweeter. Um, you know, that's all I can really remember. That was probably dreadful. Yeah, yeah, that was pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was just trying to bring back, um, and it was also trying, you know, for me to remember what did I sound like as a teenager. Like I'm very far <laughs> removed from that now. <laughs> So it was, yeah, it was just a little that, bit. Yeah, it, it was. Uh, <laughs> you just try to bring back youthfulness again. So for me, in my mind, youthfulness was just bringing the voice up, you know, octaves and um, <laughs> trying to make it sweeter. But then, you know, when she gets mad and she's like, "You have no idea what I can do," like it's Mia coming out. Yeah, because it's Mia. Yep. It's as soon as I did it, no matter how high the octave my voice went it still was like (laughs) it was still this anger that came out yeah Yeah. that's how I imagine it yeah yeah really amazing I think it worked better to have somebody else as my daughter (laughs) I mean but if I but but if we like look at the perspective of like you know Rose is is me is Mia's daughter so she, you know, should have a little bit of Mia in her. Yeah. And I think that's where um, maybe her anger comes from. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah that makes I sense think now. she gets her fight from her father <laughs> and um, her temper from her mother. So, <laughs> yeah, I was, uh, I was mad. Big spoiler alert. Uh, so when Ethan died, you know, yeah, at the end, it's not like I cared or something. <laughs> It was uh, no, no, heartbreaking. No it, it was, was heartbreaking. It was, but I, but but I was like, I expected something better. No, oh. <laughs> <laughs> but like at the same time, because I know some people say that, but at the same time, it was like he sacrificed himself for his family. It was. I think that's like the ultimate especially with all the realization of the reality of what really happened in seven. Mm-hmm. Like when all of that comes together, it's like, yeah, there's so much but, more to yeah. it. Yeah, that was pretty interesting. But I was thinking if, if Ethan was killed in seven, isn't, is basically Mia mold too? But you have to remember there's a difference between being infected and then being brought back to life by the mold. So you have to figure out, and I think that's part of what Capcom leaves up to your imagination of, so what people were infected and what people were like basically fully taken over by the mold. And also, you know, Mia had the cure. Ethan gave her the cure. In oh, right. So there's a mix. Um, you know, I can't officially say, I don't know. Um, (laughs) but I do know that Mia's tombstone was not at the end of eight. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Maybe not. I don't know. know? I don't know. Uh, (laughs) I mean, maybe for nine, you have to use like a 60 ish voice. (laughs) Put me in a little locker. Oh, Rose dear. Come over. Mama wants to tell yeah. you this story again. Okay. Village of Shadows. Oh. <laughs> uh, you never cease to, to put a smile on my face. Oh. <laughs> anyway. 
<laughs> yeah, you're too funny. Thanks. Okay. <laughs> Next, um, are you actually still in touch with the actors from Resident Evil Village or Seven? Yeah, yeah. Uh, we have, you know, I'm, I'm friends with quite a few of them. Um, I actually, you know, run into them at other auditions. The small world of acting in LA. <laughs> um, definitely run into people that you've worked with before, which is cool. And like I said, um, because of COVID, we weren't able to have a like Resident Evil Village kind of wrap party. So mm -hmm. we're going to be doing that on um, June 6th uh, via, you know, virtual, but we're mm -hmm. doing a virtual live streaming of a wrap party with a, ah. good, a good chunk of the actors are like, if they're in LA, um, they're able to be there, which is really cool. So I think there's going to be eight or nine of us all together. Mm. Yeah. Hi. So Did exciting. you say June six? So this Saturday, Saturday. yeah. Saturday. Yeah. Damn, I'm at I'm at a movie shooting that day. Oh no! Well, it'll definitely be up on line uh, after the fact. So. <laughs> but that doesn't matter. I know. Live, live is what matters. Live, and Never they're mind. gonna we're gonna we have um some really cool <laughs> giveaways, which is fun for fans, and yeah, we're just pumped. You can't see. You can't see me, but I'm raising my my my, my hands up. You're like, you know, oh, like, over here, over here. I'm av I'm available. <laughs> yeah, and then I'm doing yeah. a live signing on the sixth. So a lot of the actors are doing live signings like throughout the next two weeks. So yeah, doing those. I, I'd appreciate if you yeah, like you could link me to it so I can include it into the description so people yeah. can order yeah. their own definitely sign, prints or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Have you actually uh, played Village yet? Not yet. Not yet. No, I actually am going to be doing a um, basically live stream reaction um, in. Oh yes, please do. Yes, I'll, I'll be doing that in with the Crimson Head Elder podcast. Um, oh, oh, I know those people. Yeah, so I've done quite a few um, videos with them. They're awesome. So I'm going to be doing. They'll actually, I believe they'll be my first um, sit down in foray into watching the whole game and reacting to it. So I'm really Jesus. excited. Yes. Yeah. It, it, it's funny how how this uh, connects the Crimson Head podcast because I actually know the elder, I mean, the leader of it or whatever. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. That, that, that's funny. That's funny. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll be <laughs> hanging out next week. <laughs> next week. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. Yeah. I'm actually... So. Oh, wait, wait. I hope I will be home on June 7th because that's when I will meet Sarah Coates. <gasps> yeah. Yay! I love Sarah. Sarah's awesome. <laughs> yeah, I was really I excited so. that she came back in seven or in a in village. I get them yeah. all mixed up. The first yeah. that I heard her character, I mean, this is a familiar voice. <laughs> this must be Sarah. <laughs> You're like, it's not Marguerite, but it it's sounds something exactly. like Exactly. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. It's not Marguerite, but it's still a Southern take, I think. At least a Southern um, take on it. Something. A yeah, little something. Accent. A little accent. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. That actually reminds me of a question. Did you guys actually know, like, because um, uh, obviously you guys didn't have any accents in the village, but what was the plan since the beginning? No accents or was there anything? Um, I don't know on Capcom's end uh, what they had thought about with that. Because uh, again, with Mia, you know, she never had one. Because um, mm -hmm. in Seven, it was just a very standard um, American. Um, so mm -hmm. Mia and Ethan never had one, whereas a lot of the other actors in Seven had that like Louisiana um, yeah. Southern kind of twang. Sarah, Sarah too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, she yeah. definitely had one. So then coming into eight, you know, of course, me and Ethan won't have one. Chris, yeah. since he's been in many of the games, you know, he won't have one. Yeah. So I yeah. don't really know what their thought was. That's definitely something you'll have to ask the other actors if they were ever at, like <laughs> asked or if they had to audition with an accent. Like, I'm curious. <laughs> I want to know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, I, I definitely didn't mind them not having an accent, but you know, it would be, I guess, more like, a, you know, since it was in Romania, I guess it would have made more sense, I guess. Is it that it's like 
because I the way I always look at a lot of these games is like you definitely feel like it's set there, but technically it is in its own world yeah. in a way. So yeah. I feel like that's always that <laughs> fine line where they're like, okay, we're definitely using this as our base, but it's our own world we're creating, so we can do whatever we want. So yeah, it might be. I mean, there might were be. werewolves and things, so and vampire yeah. ladies. So yeah. I'm not even gonna lie, Resident Evil has changed since uh, 6 and the previous mm-hmm. games. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's... yeah. like in 7, there was more mm-hmm. people. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. It's, so, you yeah. know, I, I think part of it too is with the way games are, the industry, like you're always wanting to um, bring new ideas. I think if you yeah. just use the same exact thing for 25 years i don't that think gets, it would have lasted that gets 25 boring years. like you, you yeah. have to yeah you exactly. can have your base be similar like a lot of the characters but then bringing in and having that base of like the umbrella corporation and um, biohazard yeah. and chemicals and you know Definitely. all of that base is there but then it's what else can we do what else can we bring into it to like <laughs> bring new life yeah. to it so i appreciate it i also love stories and fairy tales so i really appreciated it mm-hmm. <laughs> i loved <laughs> i did too i mean i i'm not really into new games but resident evil village now that was a yeah. real deal it was just so different <laughs> you know i don't think people were expecting it which i kind of loved i also love like from the moment the trailers came out there was one of the trailers and it's basically Mia reading the book. So I got to do the voiceover for that, which I mm-hmm. loved because um, I love reading fairy tales and it's <laughs> such a Tim Burton-esque feel to a fairy tale, which mm-hmm. is my favorite thing ever. Um, so getting to read that was really fun. Um, now in real life, if I read that story to my like nieces and nephews, I would have had a lot more like crazy voices in it because I love doing that when I'm telling mm-hmm. stories to kids. Um, I did it a few times and they were like, maybe tone it down a little bit. <laughs> so <laughs> I had to be a little nicer. I was telling the story to a newborn. So I had to be, that must be, that must be pretty like, you know, like calm down a bit. Okay? Yeah. It was like, you know, just tone it down. I was like, okay, <laughs> I can do that. <laughs> I, I would be sad, <laughs> but don't tell me to do that. I was just getting I into it. It's really getting into, you know, the fish king and all these different things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The giant blood sucking yeah. bat. Yeah. So it was fun. Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now I just need to get the book so I can read it. Now you just. I need story yeah. time. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. I mean, of course. I think it would be fun. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So um going back to seven, um, how was it to, you know, like scream at a pretty much unknown actor to you at that time, I think. You know, like you were you guys were recording seven and you know, you had to you had all those scenes where you were just shouting at Ethan being crazy and all that. Yeah. Um <laughs> it definitely helps, you know, we when we did audition, you know, um I had already shot some stuff um, because I did the kitchen promo that came out um, at E3 oh, yeah. way back in the yeah. day. So when I was first brought on, I was brought on to shoot the kitchen promo. Um, so that was the first thing I ever did. Um, I worked with a couple other actors on that. And then they told me, you know, if this becomes like a bigger thing, we'll let you know. And so like a, a few months later, I got a call saying, okay, we're, we're starting in a the audition process for the other characters like we're going to turn this into a full game um so i actually got to audition with a bunch of possible ethans and that's where i met todd and you know i think we just had um like chemistry right off the bat of the audition it just felt very natural um and we just kind of got along you know it was just really easy really yeah. chill and so when we started shooting, it was just kind of fun because, um, you know, we had some normal scenes and the crazy scenes. And yeah. I think overall it was just everything was appreciated of because we could yeah. we could have those yeah. scenes. We could do the crazy stuff and then they yell cut. We go hang out while other things were happening and the two of us would talk sports or football or like life. And mm. so 
we just kind of had this friendship where it was like really easy um, to hang out and then go back on set and become like a crazy married couple. So <laughs> <laughs> made it easy. <laughs> yeah. Really, really professional. Yeah. I mean, uh, I, I probably couldn't ha- like handle your uh, crazy faces. Not to be rude, but you know, it's just too it, funny. Yeah, they get they get a little they get a little kooky. Um, I think it's more fun though, surprising people with that stuff when they're not expecting it. When when they know in the script yeah. it says it's going to happen, and you know you're hanging out with somebody and you're doing scenes with them, and then it's time for that, and it's like, oh, that's what just came out of this. Okay, so that's my favorite. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so um, how many takes did you like had to do usually to get a scene right for both seven and eight? Um, it, it really varied. Um, with seven, basically we shot or I was a part of seven on and off for about two years. So over the span of two years, um, I'd be brought in, we'd shoot stuff. Then maybe a month later, we'd go and do some ADR. Then maybe a few weeks later, it, it was just completely spread out, but it was over two years. Um, and some of the scenes, you know, one and done. It was great. Like we did it, it worked on to the next. There were other scenes that, you know, we shot it, we thought we had it. And then a few months later, mm-hmm. something just didn't work right with the animation or with this setup um, within the game. So we'd have to rework our characters in the scene and then reshoot the scene. So there were a couple of scenes that you had to do that with. And then there were other scenes where it was like, awesome, we got it. You know, it was always exciting when Capcom was there and we'd shoot stuff. And then there was the translator and they were talking and then we'd wait and wait and wait. And then we get the thumbs up. So we were like, yes, on to the next scene. (laughs) So you were always excited when you got the thumbs up from Capcom, so. Yeah, that must be pretty amazing. Yeah, that's, that's definitely nice. With eight, um, I know with my scenes with eight were fairly straightforward. Um, we pretty much were able to get those done um, fairly quickly. I don't recall having to reshoot. I'm trying to think about it. It's all such a blur now. Um, I don't recall <laughs> having to reshoot any of my scenes in eight. But again, because of covid everything was just um, reworked and put into place for safety measures. So there were no scenes that were like super big or epic with lots of actors um, Mm -hmm. with my scenes. It was all usually me and one, maybe two actors, uh, which I feel like when that's the case, possibly it makes things a little bit easier to like, just get things done. You're not worrying about everything else. Um, So that might've helped. Or maybe I'm just that good. I don't know. No, I don't know. <laughs> maybe both. I don't know. I doubt it. <laughs> <laughs> There's too much going on for you to be perfect at. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's always fun. Yeah. So, and anytime we get to do stunt stuff, I'm thrilled when they're like, are you okay with? having to jump and fall on a mat or do this or do that. And I'm always like, yeah, like, let's do it. Let's yeah. try it. But so. if my leg broke, if my leg breaks, then <laughs> we're never, never that crazy. I haven't done anything. <laughs> no, no, like yeah. Jerry rig, you know, on wires and stuff. I'm going to take classes uh, before I get into that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That must be very interesting. But hopefully, Gee. that's that's my next thing as the world opens up. I'm I'm looking forward to uh, starting to go back into motion capture, stunt work, uh, and take classes. So I think that would be something really cool to learn about because some of the actors on Eight are amazing motion capture stunt actors, and the stuff they were able to do, like flying through the air and things, is just I'm like, that's yeah. what I want to do. So. <laughs> I was quite disappointed because in the behind the scenes video, I mean, you were like only for a few seconds in it on the beginning and then like nothing. Yeah. And I was so mad. Like, where is the Mia? Where's Mia? Where's the, oh, what the hell is wrong with me? Yeah, I need more Mia scenes. But I mean, at the same time, 
all of Mia's scenes beyond that little opening are big spoilers. So they couldn't really release any of that behind the scenes without spoiling a lot. So Yeah, but from what I know, th those videos only unlock after finishing the game. I mean, so technically, some, but know. you don't want to release them online because think of how many people haven't played yet. I actually have a friend who said he had to turn off one of my interviews because he's like, it sounded like spoilers were about to happen. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. So I was like, okay, it's only been a month. Like it's not even been a month. The game hasn't even been out a month yet. So I'm still giving people time. Yeah. Yeah. Then yeah. then I'll reach out and be like, can I get any more behind the scenes footage? Yeah, that would be cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> See what happens. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that must be really amazing. Jesus. I was just excited to see that little bit. I thought that was so cool. Um, yeah, I was. Yeah, that it was, was really. That was really. Neat. <laughs> Although I laughed because, of course, it's a scene where I'm like faking getting shot by all these bullets. I'm like, of course, it's the one scene that just makes me laugh every time. So, because I just remember on set being like, "What? What do you want me to do? Okay, <laughs> this is new. I've never." been shot up before so let's uh -huh. see you know how many times do I get hit like it was trying to figure it all out and have it all like meld correctly <laughs> yeah. tougher than you think <laughs> definitely is and I cannot wait to see your reaction uh, on Resident Evil Village with the Crimson Head podcast yes. yeah yes. I'm really excited for that if I mean if, if you don't tell me this, I don't even know about it. Well, it will be announced probably this weekend. We're, we're like still like setting up stuff, but it should be um, next Friday. What's today? Not this Friday, next Friday. So June 11th is when we're going to do it. And I'll definitely plaster social media and they're really good with putting it out there when people are on um i know they have uh becca coming on there um this this weekend i believe this friday oh. she's gonna be on and she she was bella um yeah yeah so she's gonna be on and then i'll be on the following week so mm. Fun I, I i haven't really like looked into the other actors uh, portfolios and, and email and contact but only sarah Coates, and uh, so so yeah she's the next one yeah that i'm going to interview and awesome. uh, hopefully after her someone else will you know come into the yeah. picture yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hopefully <laughs> Lots of stuff. Yeah, there's there's a lot of us. It's it's definitely been a whirlwind, like I said, um, the past couple of weeks. Uh, I, I, you know, it's Resident Evil. It's exciting. But I, I don't think any of us were expecting um, how big this game has become and how much people are enjoying it. So I, I think yeah. that's, you know, it's been crazy. I always say like, cause I, I get people who reach out to me and I try so hard to get back to people right away. Um, but it, a lot comes in sometimes and it gets lost. So I always want to apologize if people are like, I hit her up and didn't hear from her. I'm like, oh, I try to keep track. I'm doing it all on my own. I'm, I'm oh. my own assistant. So I'm trying. <laughs> Um, yeah, it's been really cool. I've been able to do, I mean, I'm just grateful because all of this has opened me up to do some really cool stuff. I've done a couple of like charity speed runs with the game, raising money for mental health. I'm going to be doing one for, um, suicide, um, prevention and awareness coming up, uh, next month, I believe. So this, this whole universe has opened me up to get to do some really cool things um, with yeah. charities and with fans. Uh, and, and now that the world's opening back up, like I'm just, I'm so excited to start going out there and meeting people in person and doing all of these things in person. Like, I'm just, I'm so excited for yeah. that next chapter of the game. It's, <laughs> it, it's, it's really nice of you and uh, um, you have my full respect. And I think everyone respects you because it and all of the actors, you know, it was really amazing. And yeah, I, I can't really like say anything more because it was just amazing. Thank Absolutely you. <laughs> unbelievable. The performance and everything. Jesus. 
I'm still, I'm excited to finally get to watch the whole game. I've still only seen bits and pieces. So yeah. I'm excited. I, you're excited. <laughs> I'm excited to see. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. I can't even say. <laughs> Yeah, so it should be interesting. If it's anything like when I did uh, my first viewing of Seven, there'll be lots of repeating lines and yelling and... <laughs> <laughs> I mean... Telling, yeah, screaming, <laughs> stuff like that. <laughs> Crimson Head Podcast, if you're listening to this, I'd like you to, you know, ask uh, Katie to, you know, do a few Lady D lines here and there. Ah! <laughs> I don't think anybody can do them better than Maggie, but we can always try. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I like to see, you know, just to do, just to, you do a parody of their voice. Yeah, that would be cool. That would be fun. I'll have to, I'll have to work on those. I'll get my, get my uh, snooty evil queen back. It's been quite a long time since I've been her, so. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, yeah. But actually, the, uh, when did you guys last record it for Village? in the mocap studio oh um 2020 oh. so probably a year ago maybe early or late 2020 uh mid mid 2020 mid. yeah ah. uh, at least for me i don't know about any of the other actors but um i think i want to say june or so of 2020 because everything we were supposed to do it in uh, January and March, and then the world shut down. Uh, so we had mm -hmm. to wait until it was safe to slowly start opening um, studios back up. So there was a brief period during like June, July, things opened up and then closed again and then opened again. So I think <laughs> they were able to, during those periods, um, with all the safety measures, they were able to be like, okay, we're going to shoot these people at this time. But and then these ones and then the next one. So mm. it was all very spread out. Um, but yeah, my my last ones were summer of 2020. Yeah. And, and the worst thing is you can't really talk about it until the game comes out. No. It, it must be really like, damn, I couldn't handle it. Although I have to as well. It, it It's hard. <laughs> um, when the trailers came out in January, I was really excited because you obviously see Mia in the trailer. Mm -hmm. So I thought maybe I could talk about it, um, but just to be safe, you know, I reached out and they were like, no, nah, we, we want it all like at the same time. And I completely understood. Yeah. And I was like, all right. So I just got to stay quiet for five months. <laughs> yeah. That must be really sad and you know it's not sad I because it also is very like <laughs> like you're just so anxious and excited so it's not so much sad as just like you're just itching yeah, but... <laughs> you're just itching to to be able to be like yes it was me so when I officially announced it I kind of had to jokingly say so it's official even though all of you kind of already knew <laughs> it's official I'm back as Mia <laughs> yeah 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 have you actually so. heard like impressions, people's impressions on Mia, the voice perhaps impersonating her? Oh know? God. <laughs> you have not. You, you don't see I it. haven't. Have. Oh, that scares me. I have. How yeah. bad are they? No comment. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> hey. So I am originally from Chicago and I know my Midwest accent comes out every once in a while. So I wouldn't be surprised if uh, there were some nasally um, Mia imitations <laughs> out there. <laughs> yeah. So, so what other accents are you capable of or perhaps even languages? Um, no, no other languages fluently. Um, mm -hmm. I, you know, I took Spanish in school, so no bits and pieces. I was never very good. Uh, I lived in Japan for a few years. So I did oh. um, take classes. And while I was living there, I was able um, to start, like I could piece together sentences, but I could never, like if somebody full on talked to me, it was like too fast, too much. So usually when things were written down, I could figure out what they said. Um, and mm -hmm. then I could say like sentences or words when I needed things. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, but again, that was 
years ago so that's all gone away i now know like maybe five phrases in japanese it's, yeah it's konnichiwa. Konnichiwa. konnichiwa um okay okay uh, os- which is usually something that's said um in the entertainment world like uh when you're done for the day it's kind of like mm-hmm. a you did good you know see you later type of Thank- thing so. thanks for explaining because i wouldn't have guessed it <laughs> and and i've said it to people before and they aren't really sure what it is and then i realize i guess it's more in the entertainment because i learned it when i was working for tokyo disneyland oh. um it's what a lot of people would say at the end of the night because you know it was all entertainers we were face characters and dancers and actors and singers so we would say that to each other at the end before we went home and then came back the next day. So that was like one of the first ones I learned. Um, Chotomate kudasai means please wait your turn. <laughs> <laughs> I had to learn that when I was doing um, face care, when I was doing characters at Disney. I had to ask people to wait to take their pictures. Wait, wait in line next. Like, yeah, for that one. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Yeah. So there were always like little things here and there that I learned um, that I still remember 10 years. Gosh, it's been more than 10 years now. <laughs> It'll, it, it's been 18 years. Ah, that's crazy to me. Yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. That's uh, pretty funny. I mean, yeah. Like- that was only a few years ago. Jesus, 15 years? What the yeah, hell? Yeah. I was in <laughs> yeah, I was at Tokyo Disneyland in 2003. So it's a long time ago. <laughs> very long, eh? Yeah. Very, very long. Um, but it was also the coolest year of my life. <laughs> oh, really? Got to live there, got to learn Japanese, got to play dress up for a living. It was kind of amazing. Yeah. Definitely. Must be. Definitely. Must be. <laughs> yeah so I did that and then um accents I usually can pick up accents um from listening to them so I'm pretty mm-hmm. good when I go somewhere if I listen to an accent long enough I can usually imitate it um mm-hmm. the few accents I'm fairly good at I think uh I, I do a pretty good Brooklyn. I actually um, got cast in a TV show. Uh, I oh. did an episode of a show specifically because they wanted a Brooklyn accent. <laughs> so I had to work with my friend who was from there, um, but she said I nailed it. So I was very excited. Cool. Uh, yeah. And then uh, Irish is usually my go to. I still have family in Ireland. I'm a dual citizen. So I go over there a lot, ah. uh, which is really nice. So. Usually my family always makes fun of me because when I do go there within the first day, I'm already starting to speak with like a brogue because <laughs> just hearing everybody, like all I want to do is sound like them. So Yeah. Yeah. I want to be one of them. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, there's all different ones, but for me, um, you know, a lot of times people will be like, oh, can you just pop into the accent right now? And I'm like, I'll butcher it on the spot. I'm somebody who very much so wants to get it right because I appreciate hearing the correct accent because there have been way too many times I've seen on shows where an accent is butchered and I feel so bad for the people who are actually from there. So I usually try very hard to do my research and work on it before I put it out there to the world. <laughs> Yeah, I I don't think you've been expecting this, but I'm sure it's not only me, me, but other people want to hear an Irish Mia. Oh God, let's see. It'd be so hard. Um, oh, give me give me one of her lines to say. Hmm. <laughs> uh, um, I don't know. <laughs> I, it's so bad. Okay, let me think. Um, I can do this. I can do this. You might have to edit this together. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Sorry. I to think. No problem. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay, Ethan. I know you didn't mean to hurt me, but you shouldn't have done that. It fucking hurt! <laughs> <laughs> Good, I was muted. <laughs> I hope I was muted. Oh, that was probably terrible. I'm sorry, Ireland. It wasn't. <laughs> it wasn't bad. It, it, it was an Irish Mia, I guess. 
know how hard it is just to throw that in there. <laughs> I believe you. I, I believe you. Hey, baby. <laughs> just wanted to say I love you. <laughs> I don't know why, but I, 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 to me, it kind of sounded Italian. I don't know why. <laughs> Italian? It's not even close. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they both start with yeah. eyes, but that's about the most similar thing you'll <laughs> the, the Papa Pizza good. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, I'm dying over here. Oh, that was funny. Oh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I just think about stuff. What are we doing here? I like it. I like it though. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Oh yeah. yeah, I I like this too. I don't know why. It's funny. <laughs> There's just like yeah. so many random lines. I'm trying the one where like she can't find the door is pretty funny too. <laughs> when, like, Where's the door, she's, Ethan? When she's freaking out. She's like, oh, it was here. It was here. Where did it go? Like I think everybody laughs at that line. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I don't know. But the later he comes back and there's a door there. So she wasn't crazy. She there's, wasn't. Yeah. There's tomfoolery going on. So Yeah, there was there was some Houdini stuff. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, I thought that this is we're gonna keep this as serious as possible, but no. I don't think that's possible with me. <laughs> I don't think it's possible with me either. <laughs> yeah, especially when we are talking about pizza papa or whatever Irish me. I, um, yeah, yeah, this one, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna have all my Irish relatives so mad at me. <laughs> If they'll watch this, it's uh, safe for work, okay? There you go. Yeah. It's all for work. They put me <laughs> on the spot. I didn't know what to do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. This was a very, um, very serious audition for Irish Mia. Yes, yes. Yeah. I'll work on it, though. She needs she needs some work. The swearing isn't quite on point yet. I ought to work on that. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Jesus, Irish Mia. The problem is I'm not really like, you know, I don't know nothing about Irish accents. <laughs> the Irish accent itself. I mean, what the hell is that? It's a nice, it's a brogue. It's a brogue. It's a lovely, lovely brogue. I don't know, but I always think like the Scottish accent and the Irish accent are pretty similar, but... Mm, mm. Very different. <laughs> <laughs> Scottish is hard. I've tried. I am not good at a Scottish accent. It is tough. And I actually find Scottish harder to understand. I can, I can Definitely. understand Some are Irish just, better. And, and the African accents are also funny. But uh, um, the Scottish accent, well, I, I, I'm not good at it. But if there's one, one sentence I can say, do you drink your scrumpy? <laughs> <laughs> you need some scrumpy. You don't look so good. At, uh, <laughs> okay, that just sounded South African. <laughs> You full on went from Scottish to South African in the same sentence. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like a you know I'm from South Africa and I'm also Scottish. No, yeah, that's something. Yeah, you still need that's some fine. scrumpy. Yeah, you got it. It's stuff you got to work on. And that's that's the thing. That's what being an actor is working on it until you get it right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, some scrumpy. Yeah, some scrumpy will help. Yeah, scrumpy. 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 <laughs> yeah, I heard that's rum. But, oh, okay. Ooh. Yeah. Might have to get some of that. <laughs> yeah, some scrumpy. <laughs> I've never heard that before. I love it. I haven't either. Actually, I have. Um, yeah, and then I was told it's rum. Oh, really? Yeah, that might help me to, you know, practice the Scottish accent a bit. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All about yeah. the whiskey. 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 <laughs> No, 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 no. You look like you need some scrumpy. Scrumpy. <laughs> scrumpy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'll stick to my Guinness. Oh. No good choice. 
Guinness is the best of them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The problem is, I I just can't do a good American accent. I never was good at an American mm-hmm. accent. I mean, <laughs> if I would be from America, that probably would be a different thing. But uh, you know, yeah, I don't. I, I can't really explain what accent I'm using right now, which is a normal accent that I'm speaking with. <laughs> I, I think you might like, you know, you, you could tell me something about it. Tell me about it, please. About your accent? Yes, please. If it's possible. I was, I was actually curious of where, where in particular you're from, because I was like, Hmm, what is this? <laughs> <laughs> and the more you started talking about Italy, I was like, it's not, but <laughs> No, it's not Italy. No, no, no. <laughs> it's not South African either. <laughs> See again, you're a start of South African there. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I've been practicing the British accent a bit, but I didn't really like try to use it here because why? Oh. Um, yeah. Uh, some people. I mean, sometimes I just slip into a little bit of a southern accent. That's usually anybody who's not American who has to do an American accent. I would say the first go to, they always end up being Southern. Like, there's so watch movies, like, go back, watch any movie. And usually, if it's a Southern character, they're probably British. Like, <laughs> <laughs> there are so many movies that do that. Thanks for the info, son. It, nah, that yep. wasn't good. Nah. But you're, you're like, you're on that point of, Okay, how can I switch my accent? Oh, I'll go to an American accent, which is Southern. So you can hide it. Actually, the co-host of this podcast, uh, his, his name is uh, Sam. So he's from Georgia. And, okay. Uh, now, now, you now got to imitate him. <laughs> he, he was laughing at it. I mean, like, he, he, you sound, I'm going to, I'm from Slovakia. It's uh, Okay. Yeah. So, so he said, I sound like a Slovakian Southern guy. <laughs> and, and, and then, and then, I mean, like, I I started doing more of a southern accent, something like now, nah, but not really, son. There how you go. Doing, how you doing, son? You know, I'm good. I do. Yeah, and for women, it's just yeah. about being like, oh my, well, how are you doing? Oh mm-hmm. my, my, our prayers there have been answered. <laughs> <laughs> my I'm Lord. just southern than Belle. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then you just have to say. Oh, what's the best one? Bless your heart. Mm -hmm. That's that's the key. When a Southern says, bless your heart, bless your sweet little soul. You did something wrong. That's that's not a good thing when they say it. (laughs) (laughs) That is something I learned. It's not, stay away, stay away. You did something wrong. You annoyed them in some way. (laughs) I just, so yeah, when I tried to do this Southern accent, he was laughing at me and I couldn't, what the hell, man? What's wrong with you? Am I doing something wrong? What up, man? Yeah. You sound like all of my Irish friends who like try to do an American accent. They're always, yeah, here we go. What's up, man? And it. (laughs) Yeehaw. Exactly. (laughs) yeah look at me i'm an american like oh no tell me we don't sound like that (laughs) no you sound very american and uh, american yeah american is a good choice of word to describe all of you american individuals i'll I'll take my nice midwest i have my midwest accent i'll take it (laughs) Yeah, but this guy, this uh, co-host of mine, he said that it's easier to get into a Southern accent if you have like a normal American one. I could see that. But at the same time, it's easier to hide, I think, your accent with a Southern accent because you're just because also I believe like a lot of Southern twangs like come from Europe. Like Mm -hmm. there's a lot of like melding and that's part of how um, the accent kind of started growing and building the way people were coming over and moving and yeah. <laughs> all of this. So Southern, a lot of times you'll hear Southern people and sometimes like it sounds almost British at times, if it's sometimes, not like, super, yeah, not all the yeah. time, but 
that's something I noticed. And I thought that was really interesting. And I started looking more into accents and, you know, especially in the United States, there's so many different accents and where they came from and how they came to be. And yeah, uh, it's, it's really interesting. It's, to it's look interesting. At the history of, yeah. um, of the United States and like how accents came to be. And then I moved out exactly. to California and <laughs> who knows what the accent is out here. It. <laughs> Yeah, Saturday night, I, Saturday night Live had it correct with uh, the Californians. There are actually <laughs> people who speak with that accent out here. <laughs> I didn't think I didn't think it was real until I met them. They live they live on the beach, uh, but they're real. <laughs> beach, beach at um whatever. <laughs> so 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 yeah. Um, from Asia, if there's any accents you like, the Indian ones that I find funny. Um, like uh, I'm under the water. Please help me. Oh jeez. <laughs> Yeah, I yeah would not be able to. No, <laughs> do me that. neither. And and then here is this I think West African one, which I think which I don't think I can do. But uh, there is this one specific character in a game, and I love to do his lines. And whenever I hear him, I go like, "We were at the port when we were attacked, and well, oh, I ended up that's here." Cool. But I I just you know since I'm not a like an accent coach or whatever, uh, I can't really like tell if if it is what it's supposed to be or not. It's hard. It's, it's hard. really hard. Yeah. And the worst is when you think you got it, and then you hear a recording, and you're like, "Ooh, I wasn't even close." Like that. Yeah. That was not even close. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, th- it's even worse when you think you were close, but the director is like, eh, "No, really, okay." And that's basically what Chiorba de Legum was for me. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I thought I had it. Wasn't even close. <laughs> I mean, I don't think I I would have been able to say it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, for me, um, I mean, I speak a few languages here and there. Nice. Yeah, I wish. my but brain they... just doesn't want like just doesn't register different languages. I'm so impressed with people who can speak multiple languages. It's amazing to me. Well, I wish, I, I wish, I mean, we have accents too. Uh, yeah. And I'm quite mad because I, I can't do them. I mean, like I can do, a, I mean, there are like four different Slovakian accents that I, I can't do any of them. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's pretty sad. Yeah. What else is there? I mean, like, the British accent, you know, I've been practicing that for quite a while now, but I don't think that works. Yeah. <laughs> you have to find like the place though. Cause even Britain, like, it's like, where are they from? Is it a Manchester accent? Is it, you know, like London, like there's yeah, different accents. The, the, yeah, exactly. But I can't really specify the one I have. If, even if I have one, I can't mm-hmm. specify it because I just can't, you know, it just <laughs> it it just comes and and goes and see yeah. and it's like you're slipping. You, I hear a little southern in there. <laughs> it just comes and goes and and when you sound well, like a very fancy southerner. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, this is, well. I can't believe we are doing this on an interview podcast. Yeah, why not? That's what this I mean, is for. It's, it's fun. It, yeah, it's really fun, and I'm enjoying <laughs> it very much. I hope I will have at, at least as much as fun with the Sarah as I had with you, because it's you really definitely fun. will. Sarah is awesome. You you will definitely have a good time with her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Jesus. Oh, she right. It's fantastic. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, can't. I I have seen a few interviews with you here and there uh, like the one with dan allen not sure if you remember that guy i do i do you know he, he was fun that was a good time <laughs> yeah i mean i haven't watched the whole thing but you know oh and here is this his this section chorba de la Goom. okay there you go katie thought mia was going to die in resident evil 8 i think that yeah that pretty you pretty much told me that yeah yeah well that wouldn't have been cool I would have been, I would have been bummed. Got to admit, <laughs> would have been bummed. Sad. But yeah, that would, I, that would have been sad. I mean, Ethan luckily, died. It didn't turn out that way. So. Yeah, but I mean, I, I actually, I think uh, that Ethan's death wasn't like too sad. I know. Oh, I think you're I, one of the few because it broke my heart. I was 
I tear okay. up. Okay, okay, but you you're her husband. You're his husband. That's different. Okay, that's a different thing. It's still you care about him. I miss him. <laughs> <laughs> I only have part of him with me now. Oh, Ethan, you okay, man? Nah, He's man. He's good. He's good. It's all it, that's left. It's my mom's, homie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I actually find the the I don't want to be racist or something, but the, the the black people have this really nice accent that I just can't understand. <laughs> it almost sounds like a southern one, but I don't know. I, I can't I can't explain it. I don't know. <laughs> I think that goes the same with everyone in in all walks of life of yeah. just accent. It's just all where you come from, all yeah. where you grow up. Um the town, even some places, it's like a neighborhood accent. I know in Chicago, you know, Thugs. you look at like a generation older than me and you get people mm. like specifically um, with accents that aren't even Chicago accents, they're neighborhood accents. Yeah. And I think that's, I think that happens in every race and walk of life and uh, occupation. Like I just, yeah, accents amaze me. I think they're so interesting mm. for sure. Yeah. Same. I just can't replicate any. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I mean, no, because um, the southern accent. I don't even know where it came from. You know, I was watching one specific like a video game or something, and there's this one specific character that has this southern accent, Texas accent. Ah, uh, Texas. Yeah, Texas, <laughs> Texas. All my exes live in Texas. But whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I I, I do th I do think that accent is a pretty cool accent. Yeah, Texas is a good one. I got I got family in Texas. Got some thick accents there. <laughs> Texas. <laughs> good old Texas. <laughs> good old Texas. Hell yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Make sure to drink a lot of water. I know you need to. <laughs> that is important. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, um, that this is a question. But whenever you like do you do voiceover. I believe you can have like some kind of liquid in the booth and I, yeah. it's water, right? Uh, well, it, tea, water, whatever, you know, works for you. Um, mm. Water is always good, but there's also a tea called throat coat. And that's really good um, for doing uh, voiceover, especially if you have long sessions or strenuous um, sessions. So, uh, yeah, usually there's tea. You just don't want anything to dehydrate you. So yeah. tea and water are usually the go-to, um, for that. Mm. Is that yeah. your, your home booth behind you? No, this is just like my little wall. So that podcast, uh, place. Yeah. yeah. So you don't see the mess of bookshelves behind me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, books are pretty interesting. Um, they some, are, some. but it's also just a hot mess. So I figure this is much easier. It helps for sure is. and yeah, <laughs> all that kind of stuff. Do you I have... do need to iron it though. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you should, you know, for the Crimson Head podcast exclusive stuff. At some point, it, it'll get steamed. <laughs> yeah. What, what did I want to ask? Katie, you shouldn't have done that. Now I don't remember the question. Uh, <laughs> what was it oh yeah do you have like a home studio because you know when you, whenever you audition i don't think it's possible to go into the studio there because mostly the companies now expect you to have a home studio and record the audition at home um it really depends sometimes agencies will have studios that you can go into there's also like businesses that have them um because of covid more people created their own home studio so i do mm -hmm. have um basically i turned one of my closets into a little um voiceover booth so Ooh, that's my pretty cool yeah so it's you know it's got all um you know sound foam um around mm -hmm. it and i bring my computer in there and i have a microphone and lighting and mm -hmm. depending on the audition you just kind of go in there and go for it it's not soundproof so i usually warn my neighbors and my husband if i'm doing like, something crazy in there yeah, like <laughs> okay 
screaming. It, this it's not even crazy. telling them to be quiet. It's more warning them that like, if you hear me screaming, like someone's killing me, don't it's come just over there. An audition. Like, yeah. don't worry. So. Don't worry. Nothing to worry about. Don't I, call the police. Yeah. Everything's okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I mean, since you're an actress, it, it must be pretty interesting. Cause you know, um, <laughs> you're doing these all crazy sounds and screams. I mean, like, and I don't think I, I, your husband obviously knows what's going on, but what if you'd actually need help once and, you know, <laughs> well, hopefully, <laughs> hopefully there'll be a difference. <laughs> hopefully. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like you're gonna, you know, you will like tell your husband, like, if I do this specific sound, <laughs> then we have a problem, you know? So well, I think if he's in the house with problem. me, he would know if there's something wrong. <laughs> Yeah, that's just so funny. Jesus. You would hope. You would hope that they'd know you well enough. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Last thing that we should probably do is the outro. Sure. So let's get into it. Do you have anything to tell our viewers? Yeah. Um, I just want to say thank you guys so much, all of the RE fans and fandom and the RE community. Uh, it's been such an honor to be a part of it and to bring Mia to life. Thank you guys for all the love. Um, if you want to follow me on um, any of my social media to know when interviews or live signings are coming up with myself or the uh, other Resident Evil Village cast members, please follow at Katie Oax on Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook. Um, I try to respond to as many people as I can. I love uh, connecting with all of you. You make all of this worth it. Um, it is so wonderful. And uh, yeah, thank you guys so much, so much. <laughs> <laughs> that was a sweet message. Yeah, guys, definitely check out Katie O'Hagan on Instagram and Twitter and Facebook and whatever other social media she has. <laughs> you know, follow her and make sure to check out her stuff because she's a very interesting lady. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, this has been lots of awesome. fun. Thanks so much for coming. Thank you on. so much for inviting me and reaching out. This was awesome. And have fun with Sarah next week. <laughs> Hi, baby. I can't wait for you to get home. Little Rose is waiting for you and so am I. I'm just, I'm just about, about to start, to start cooking, cooking dinner. dinner. And you know, you know as usual, usual, listening, listening to, the to the Vogue podcast. podcast. <laughs> anyway, anyway, I've, I've got to go, go now because they just, just released, released a new episode. episode. Yay! Yay! <laughs> I'll call, I'll you, call after you after I finish, I finish dinner. dinner. Bye, Bye, baby! baby.